All right, everybody, I'm Logan Alec. I'm a CPA, and in this video, I'm going to review the H&R Block online tax software for use in preparing 2020 tax returns due in 2021. Now, you might be very familiar with H&R Block for their brick and mortar tax preparation offices, but they actually have a pretty robust online tax preparation software that, in my opinion, is getting better and better every year. Last year, it didn't quite offer the same seamless experience that TurboTax did, but I'm excited to dive into H&R Block online this year and see how they've improved. By the way, I already did a TurboTax review, a review of the TurboTax tax software for tax year 2020 for tax returns due in 2021. You can see a link to my TurboTax review at the top of the screen right here. But before we get into this H&R Block review in which I'll prepare a simple tax return H&R Block and give my thoughts and opinions on the tax software as I walk through it. So it's kind of a walkthrough and review all in one. Before we get into that, I want to mention a couple ways you can support the channel so I can continue making content like this. First thing, I have affiliate links to tax software in the description below. I have links to TurboTax, H&R Block, TaxLayer, TaxAct, might add some others as tax season continues. If you make a purchase through the links below, right? If you click the link, my link below, and you buy H&R Block through it, for example, H&R Block Online Tax Filing, you will pay the same price as you would pay if you went directly to H&R Block Online. But if you use my link, I will get a commission, small commission of your purchase price. So it's a small way to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Also, as a CPA, at this point in my career, I'm not focusing so much on tax return preparation, but rather tax relief and tax resolution, helping taxpayers who owe a lot of money to the IRS get that tax bill lowered through strategies like offering compromise, partial pay, installment agreement, things like that. So uh, if you or somebody you know owes at least $10,000 to the IRS, please see some information in the description below, the description of this video, uh, where I give you information about how to contact me to see if I can help you out with that, okay? All right, now let's get into our H&R Block review. I'm gonna hop behind my laptop now and get started. All right, so here we have the H&R Block online tax filing homepage here. Um, there's a couple ways to go about this. You can select various uh, aspects about yourself here little check marks, right? And then it'll, it, H&R Block will recommend down here which tax software it thinks you need, right? So for example, if your only selection here is that you have kids, it'll say, okay, you're probably good with the free online. However, if you own rentals, well, you probably need the premium. If you're self-employed, you probably need a self-employed edition. For purposes of this walkthrough, I'm just going to focus on the free edition because I just want to kind of give my take on the H&R Block experience as a whole. As we go through tax season, I may very well do more videos in H&R Block about how to use it for self-employed, how to use it for uh, real estate and rental properties. But for purposes of this video, I'm just going to focus on the free edition. Now, the H&R Block free edition is actually more robust than the TurboTax uh, free edition. There are it, it covers more situations. So on my screen here is actually a list of all the forms that you can file in H&R Block using the free edition. And there are some items here that you could use the H&R Block free edition for that you can't use the TurboTax free edition for. For example, student loan interest. If you're eligible for a student loan interest deduction, you can still use the H&R Block online free edition, but you'd have to pay for the TurboTax premier edition, I believe. Tuition payments. If you qualify for the American Opportunity Tax Credit, Lifetime Learning Credit, you can take those credits using the H&R Block free tax software. You would have to upgrade to a paid version of TurboTax to take those credits. Other items, educator expenses, child care expenses, right? You pay for your uh, daycare for your child or dependent care. You pay for uh, somebody to care for uh, another dependent who's not, who's not a child necessarily, but still a dependent. You can take that those credits for free using h and Block. You'd have to pay to, to a paid edition of TurboTax to take those credits. Retirement savings credit uh, is another example. So keep that in mind. In my opinion, h and Block has the best free tax filing, right? In the sense that it covers the most situations. So um, if you have any of those situations, h and Block might be the tax software for you rather than TurboTax. All right, let's get started um, with the walkthrough here. File for free. Oh, and by the way, if you're not sure which TurboTax edition you should use, just select the free one. TurboTax will tell you if you need to upgrade, okay? All right, so uh, I think i got to create an account here. Now, obviously, if you have an H&R Block account that you've used before, sign in with that same login information, but I'm going to say that I do not have an account. Okay, so it's asking for mobile number. 
Okay, I didn't really need the mobile number. All right, remember this device, agree to the online services agreement, great, next. Sure, save it. Um, you can do this, this is optional, right? But the two-step verification thing, if you give them your phone number, they can do that or use Google Authenticator. I'm gonna skip that for now because I'm gonna be preparing a fake return in here. And if people steal this fake returns data, they're not really accomplishing very much. Okay, a little slower than TurboTax, I feel here right off the bat. Okay, good afternoon. It says a few things before we get started. We'll show you how to easily import last year's taxes. Always know what you're paying with price preview. Get help wherever and however you need it. All right. Okay, so let's say that they have this thing about COVID-19. Okay, so it's just, I think this is just information here. Okay, that's nice. Next. Okay, so similar to TurboTax, right? When you, when you sign up for TurboTax, TurboTax asks you if you are okay with TurboTax sharing your information with probably its partners, right? Where TurboTax gets a kickback. It looks like H&R Block is doing the same thing. Invitations to exclusive offers, personalized advice based on your tax situation, new and improved products and services. So what I think this means is, like let's say you have a mortgage. Well, you file a tax return, H&R Block knows you have a mortgage, right? Because you're gonna deduct your mortgage interest if you itemize your deductions. They might send you offers through their partners to refinance your mortgage, right? Because they could probably back into the interest rate based on the interest you pay, you know, stuff like that, right? So personally, I don't like being on mailing lists, so I'm probably gonna not consent to this. I mean, they might, I'm not sure I like that. It says, let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Now, if you just kind of read this, you might think like, oh, I have to sign this in order for H&R Block to file my tax return. That's actually not true. This is actually giving H&R Block permission uh, to, to give your information to service providers and business partners, right? Where H&R Block gets like a kickback. Uh, we can check this out if we want really quick. What is this? Okay, so yeah, it's basically on their marketing mailing lists, basically, right? Right, And they may use their business partners to uh, to market things to you. So I'm actually not going to, I'm going to say no thanks. You don't have to do this, right? It doesn't affect your tax return at all. How did you file your taxes last year? Obviously, you're going to answer uh, as appropriate. If you used h and Block, you would say that. I'm going to say use another tax company. Okay, so similar to TurboTax, you can upload your last year's tax return, right? Just the PDF of it. And hopefully, H&R Block will be able to pull the data from it into H&R Block. Um, of course, if you do this, you really want to double check that they import things correctly. Because this is a fake tax return I'm doing, I'm not going to do this. Uh, so I'm going to hit skip import, right? But go ahead and try it if uh, you know you have a PDF of your last year's tax return, your 2019 tax return. All right, now you got to input the basic information. So how this is going to work is I actually prepared like tax documents for um, a fake person named Jimmy Dean here. And so that's what this is what I'm gonna use to, to do this uh, simple tax return HR block, okay? Okay, so taxpayer's name here is, uh, his name's Jimmy Dean. He lives on Wilcox Avenue in Los Angeles. So I'm basically just gonna input this, this information here. Obviously you would input your real information. Date of birth, let's say he was born on July 4th, 1976. We're gonna say that Jimmy is single. We're gonna say that last year's preparer. Let's just say I prefer not to answer. Uh, this return for a taxpayer passed away, no. Legally blind or disabled, no. Obviously, if you're legally blind or disabled, you check that box, but I'm assuming Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's not. Jimmy's social, what did I put Jimmy's social as here? 777-665544. 777-665544. Okay, you have to put your social security number in. That's not weird at all. Your social security number goes on your tax return, so that's that's not weird. Phone number, okay. Yeah, IRS, yeah, you, you have to give me your phone number in order to file. So Jimmy's phone number, I'm making this up. Don't call it. Simple tax questions, let's go. Were you a US citizen? Yes. Did you live in the US for more than six months? Yes. Were you a student? No. Obviously, if you are a student, you would answer this question, right? Um, yes, but I'm just doing the sample person, Jimmy Dean, that I made up. Can someone else claim me as a dependent? I'm gonna say no. Do you have any dependents? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say that Jimmy has a daughter named Molly. So, I'm gonna add a dependents here. Molly Dean, what's her social? I don't know, one, 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 two, two, three, 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 three. 
Let's say she was born on New Year's Day 2011. Let's say she's Jimmy's daughter. And you got to read these situations because uh, the answer to this, these questions here determine whether or not that uh, she can be claimed as a dependent, right? Whether Jimmy can claim her as a dependent. So residency test. Yes. Lived with me all 2020. Yeah, let's say yes. U.S. citizen. Yes. Has a social security number. Yep. Uh, married. No. She's nine years old. Did not pass away. This is an important question. Here she provided more than half of his or her, her own living expenses. They asked this question, right? Although in this situation, Molly's like nine years old. She doesn't cover her own living expenses. But basically, if she did, uh, she couldn't be claimed as a dependent, right? Uh, but we're saying no, no, she doesn't have an ITN. She has a social. Uh, we're we're going to say no, she doesn't have a disability. Okay. Did Molly live with his or her other parent or another person for more than six months in 2020? We're going to say no. We're going to say Molly lived with Jimmy full time, right? Um, because if there's a dispute over who can claim Molly as a dependent, uh, they, one of the things to look at is where did she spend the most nights, right? But we're not going to get into that issue here because that's kind of a tangent. Now, this is interesting. Um, TurboTax actually asked, hey, do you have an agreement with uh, Molly's other parent? Because uh, obviously you need two parents to make a child. Uh, do you have an agreement with Molly's other parent as to who can claim Molly, right? TurboTax asked that question, right? H&R Block did not. Too much TurboTax was a little more um, inquisitive and wanted to make sure that you can actually claim the dependent, right? So that's one thing that H&R Block didn't do um, because it's a pain, right? If if parents are separated, right, and they, you know, they're divorced, let's say they're divorced, right, and, you know, parent A claims the child and parent B claims the child in the same year, it creates like a nightmare situation where parent A e-files claiming the child, parent B tries to e-file claiming the child, the e-file gets rejected because the, uh, you know, the computers see that that child's social security number was already claimed by parent A, then parent B has to paper file and the, the IRS has to, you know, verify things. It's just a big mess, mess right? So I kind of like that TurboTax kind of put a little more into that verification process, right? And how that's usually worked out is usually in the divorce decree or, you know, there's even a form you can file with the IRS where you kind of determine who's going to be able to claim uh, the dependent. Oftentimes they just switch, right, uh, year to year. Anyway, um, okay, so Molly's our dependent here. Did you pay more than half of the cost of maintaining the home you share with your dependents? Yes, right? Because if you, if Jimmy didn't pay more than half of the costs of maintaining the home, that means someone else must have, and potentially Jimmy could be claimed as a dependent. But we're saying, uh, we're saying yes, Jimmy, Jimmy paid more than the half of the cost of the household, so Jimmy is head of household. Uh, if Jimmy didn't have Molly, right, as his qualifying child, his dependent, he would just be single. But head of household is a more advantageous status, um, uh, generally speaking, than single. So H&R Block determined that he uh, he should file as head of household, which is appropriate in this situation. Okay, so it explains this. You can, I guess you can see if you want to see if you qualify for another filing status. I don't know why you would. Um, okay, so this looks like just a review page. You're going to review the information. Let's switch gear and start looking at your income. Okay, let's go. Do you want to start on your W-2? Yes. Okay, how do you want to add your, your W-2? So apparently for some employers, you put the employer identification number into h and Block, you know, and, and they, the, the employer identification number, the EIN, is on your W-2, right? On your W-2, it's in this little B here. I obviously made this one up. But you can put it in here, and um, it could actually import the W-2, right, depending on if your employer set up for it. Obviously, this is a fake employer here. This is a big company that I made up, so there's, there's, this isn't going to work, right? So I'm going to hit import W-2, and it's, it's not going to work. Right, so yeah, it looks like your employer isn't a partner just yet. Yeah, because they don't exist. <laughs> uh, so we got to enter manually, which is not a problem. Entering W-2s is super easy. Okay, so all the information on the W-2 screen, you're going to be able to pull, obviously, from your W-2. Uh, employer's name, I said it's a big company at 633 West 5th Street in LA. So I'm just going to type that stuff here. 633 West 5th Street. Okay. Oh, the zip code. I put in the zip code, automatically fill out the city and state. TurboTax didn't do that. Okay. No. All right. Employee's address. This is a little... Did, did, did we input uh, Jimmy's address yet? I don't think so. I think TurboTax 
they ask you for the address like at the very beginning and then it auto populates this. So just another little thing where HNR block, you know, it's not, I mean, it's gr don't get me wrong, it's great. This has been easy so far, but it's just little things like that where um, HNR block doesn't quite provide the experience that TurboTax does. Okay, so here's what I say Jimmy's address is. I'm gonna put that in. Although I must say it's nice that HR block auto populates the city and state. TurboTax didn't do that. So there's kind of like pros and cons, right? Okay, now we're actually filling in the numbers. So boxes one through 11, that's the stuff here. Boxes one through 11, so I'm gonna fill it out. Uh, wages, tips, other compensation, that's 83, 867, 54. So 83, 867, 54. It's gonna round it by the way. Uh, federal income tax withheld, 7205.8, $7,205.80. Social Security wages eighty three thousand nine hundred eight dollars and seventy nine cents. Eighty three thousand nine hundred dollars and seventy nine cents. Social Security tax withheld five thousand two hundred seven dollars ninety two cents. Right, Medicare wages and tips eighty three nine nine eight point seven nine. And if you're wondering why. Social Security wages and Medicare wages are higher than wages, tips, and other compensation. It's because in this fake W-2 I prepared, I said that this individual, Jimmy, contributed $131 to his 401k plan. So the 401k contributions reduces the taxable wages here, box one, which is gonna go, what's going to go on your 1040, but it doesn't reduce your Social Security or Medicare wage basis. So uh, that's why there's that difference there. Anyway, uh, Medicare tax withheld $1,217.98. Social security tips, nope, nope. Nothing in seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so nothing in seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, great. All right, box 12 has all these codes, right? And you can just input them here. So box C, right, 417.49, employer provide life insurance, box D here. I'm actually going to get rid of code W. If you have code W, don't don't get rid of it. We're, we're going to ignore it. I guess I can't delete it now. Anyway, okay, box D. This is 401k deferral, 131.25. Then we have box double D. This is the cost of the employer provided health insurance, 24199.76. Uh, box W is HSA contributions. Obviously, if you have this, you would input it, Okay. However, I didn't realize at the time that I was preparing this fake W-2 that if you do have HSA contributions, then you will have to pay for the paid edition of both h and Block and TurboTax, right? So I might, I might do a walkthrough of the paid edition at a future date, but for right now, I just want to focus on the free edition. So I'm actually going to remove that from the, from the W-2. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend this doesn't exist. Obviously, if you have code W and your W two, you're gonna you're gonna input it, right? But I'm just removing it uh, because I don't want to have to get into the paid edition in this walkthrough. Okay, um, box three, or sorry, box thirteen, right here. It's box thirteen, retirement plan, retirement plan. Box fourteen, choose your codes. Okay, then this is I like this. Right, because if you look at box 14, what are Jimmy's? Jimmy has a code for California SDI, right? The disability insurance, 83581. So in TurboTax, you just had to type in CASDI and trust that TurboTax knew what you were talking about. But here, it looks like it actually is a drop down for it, which is you know a little more reassuring, along with other state uh, withholding um, uh, withholding programs. All right, so we got that. Now we're box 15 and through 20 state and local information. So that's at the bottom of the W-2. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna input this stuff as it appears on the W-2. State ID, here it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. TurboTax said no dashes. I don't know if you could do dashes in HR block. I didn't though. State wages, uh, typically the same as what's in box one, uh, unless you know you work for the same, same employer in different states. Uh, state income tax withheld, box 17, 484862, 484862. All right, no local wages, local income tax, none of that. All right. Um, uh, if there was a second state here, uh, you would add that state here, right? And then do the same thing, but for the information for that state. I don't remember I don't remember if that was as obvious in, in TurboTax, actually. Okay. All right, we're going to hit next. Uh, employer identification number is not valid. Okay, so 
you're not going to run into this issue because you're using real identification numbers. But basically, I think it's detected that this EIN I put 99999999 and the social security number I made up, it detected they're fake. Or uh, actually, no, not the social, just the EIN. It detected that it's fake. So I think I got to like maybe do that, see if it works. Obviously, you're going to use what's actually on your W-2, right? This is just a walk. Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm. There we go. Okay. Uh, tell us if any of these apply to W-2. If it's corrected, you check this box, right? You got one W-2, and then your employer sends you another W-2. It'll usually have W-2C on it. Non-standard, active duty military wages. No, we're, just, we're not going to, we're assuming none of this applies for uh, Jimmy. Okay, so they applied the child tax credit. Great, right? Because he has Molly, right? Dependent child under the age of 17. Um, cool. Now, one thing I noticed that H&R Block doesn't have, oh, it, does, it has it right here, actually. Okay, so this is your tentative refund, right? TurboTax has it up here, a little more apparent. H&R Block kind of has it right here on the left-hand side. That's cool. They still show you what your refund is at, at the moment. Okay, if you had another W-2, right, you had another employer, you had add another W-2, go through the process again, but I'm not going to do that because I said Jimmy only has one W-2. Okay, so is this your current address? Right, they got it from the W-2. Okay, so they kind of they kind of did it reverse the TurboTax. TurboTax, you input your w, your address first, and then it just imports that into the W-2. H&R Block, you just put it in the W-2 section, and then from there, TurboTax takes it. So it's all good. Hit next. Occupation. Now, this is interesting. I don't... Oh, yeah. Uh, TurboTax did ask for occupation, because there's a line item on the 1040 for occupation. And what is Jimmy doing? I'm saying he's a sausage maker. Um, okay, obviously, if you're in the military or you're a member of the clergy with the housing allowance and unreimbursed expenses, you check these boxes. I'm assuming that doesn't apply to Jimmy. Did you buy, sell, or send, or receive any virtual currency? No. Next. Uh, foreign accounts or assets? No. You should live in California. And obviously, you're going to answer these questions as, as they realistically apply to you. If you traded cryptocurrency, you would say yes, right? But I'm just doing this fictitiously for this fake person, Jimmy Dean. No foreign accounts or assets. Did you live in California? Yes. So I'm going to assume that Jimmy lived in California all year, right? If you lived some part of the year in one state, some part of the year in another state, you could have filing requirements in both of those states. But keep things simple here, I'm going to say Jimmy lived in California all year. Did you earn any money in states besides California? No. Here's your income. Okay. I, I also, I also made this like interest income thing for this, this fake person, Jimmy Dean. Um, I'm wondering when they're going to ask about it. Uh, Cause if, you know, I might just hit next, next, next. Okay. Now it's going back to the duck. It didn't even really bring up, like it asks you or it gives you the option here to like add another source of income here. But I feel it wasn't, the prompting wasn't like super strong like i feel like in turbo tax like it was really like hey did you have any did you have you know any other income but here it's like it, it's kind of just depending on you to notice that all your income isn't reported here so i hit add income right and then i go down to interest like you have to find the income that you have it doesn't really prompt you for it you kind of have to know and then the weird thing is here it says view visit topic stand for other things yeah like that doesn't sound like it almost sounds like you want to learn about that topic, right? It doesn't really sound like, I, I would think it w would say like input interest income here or something like that. So that's another kind of little weird thing. Okay, interest income. I'm just going to pull it, right? I, I made up this bank called Big Bank at 633 West 34th Street, New York. So I'm just going to input Big Bank. Okay, and the and the interest income I just said is $100, right? From box one. So, okay, nothing else in the other boxes. Easy peasy, right? Okay. All right. Now that's all Jimmy's income. Right. Okay. All right. Deductions, deductions, deductions. Um, okay. So it says here are some common deductions you might have. Vehicle tax. Right. This is like your vehicle registration. When you renew your vehicle registration, pay the license fee and all those other fees. Uh, with your state every year, a portion of that may be tax deductible. In California, it indicates the tax deductible portion on the like the statement we get. Your state probably does the same. Um, so yeah, you're gonna if if any is applied to you, you'd obviously select it, right? 
Uh, if you do itemize your deductions, right, because home mortgage interest is an itemized deduction, you would have to upgrade to uh, the next level of TurboTax. Now, this is important. If your standard deduction exceeds your itemized deductions, right, you may still be able to use the free edition. But if your itemized deductions exceed your standard deduction, uh, then it'd probably be in your best interest to um, upgrade to the next level of, of uh, HR block. So uh, I'm going to say no to all this stuff for Jimmy. By the way, student loan interest is not an itemized deduction. It's an above the line deduction. It's an adjustment to your income. And in HR block, you can take the student loan interest deduction and still use the free edition. TurboTax, you'd have to pay. So keep that in mind if you have student loans. Okay, here's kind of another thing. Like it, it, it asks like about four common deductions on the previous screen. But again, here it's kind of like, I feel like TurboTax, it kind of like walked you through. It was like, did you own a home? Did you uh, make charitable contributions? But here it's kind of like up to you to kind of just look through the list here and figure out what applies to you. So it's not quite as hold your hand, I want to say. Um, but I'm not saying that any of these apply to, uh, to Jimmy right now. Um, I mean, I'll say that he, oh, actually I will. So ah, that's another thing. L l l let me just say like, how do I put this? So the CARES Act, right, it made that rule where even if you don't itemize deduction, and Jimmy's not going to itemize his deduction in this fake return, you can still deduct up to $300 in charitable contributions, even if you don't itemize your deductions. Like TurboTax, it like knew that, you know, that that's a thing that I might, uh, that the taxpayer might be interested in. And it actively prompted that. Like it popped up a screen. The taxpayer didn't have to think about that. Um you know, TurboTax just directly asked it. But again, here in HR Block, you kind of got to figure things out for yourself, right? So I'm going to say that, yeah. And another thing, it's like cash deduction donations for non-itemizers. Uh, non like you kind of have to know you're a non-itemizer. It's just, it's things like this that it's not quite as user-friendly as TurboTax, I want to say. I mean, it gets the job done. It gets the answers done. But I feel like, you know, uh, HR Block requires a little bit more preliminary knowledge about taxes okay um right so it's gonna max out at 300 this could be confusing right it doesn't really explain it uh maybe explain it on the first screen but not here right I, well i put a thousand why does it only say 300 well because the cares act only said the max is 300 so um Right. Okay. So standard deduction of 18,650. This is the standard deduction for 2020 for head of household filers. Credits. Okay. Recovery rebate credit. And this is kind of interesting because it hasn't really explained the recovery rebate credit. That's the credit you get if you didn't get the full stimulus uh, payment you're entitled to, right? Or if you weren't entitled to a stimulus payment, but you became eligible for a stimulus uh, payment based on your 2020 information. So, you know, it's going to be confusing if you didn't know what that was. Um, but let's, let's, and child tax credit, that's pretty self explanatory, but still, you know, maybe not everybody would know. So let's hit next. Here are some common credits you might have. Now, this is another thing where it's kind of like weird, right? Like, it's, if you're not sure a topic applies to you, choose it and we'll work through it together. Like, okay, what if, what if someone has no idea what the savers credit is? Do they have to, like, spend and let's say it doesn't apply to them but they're not sure what it is so they're going to choose it because h and block tells them to i guess they're, they're supposed to choose it and then just work through it you know like even if it doesn't apply to them i don't i feel like TurboTax was a little more user friendly in this way like it would just ask questions and tell you oh you're eligible for this you're not eligible for that well h and block online is kind of like you kind of have to know a little bit anyway um now this is okay. So Jimmy does qualify for the child tax credit, but what if I don't select this? I want to see what H and R Block does. Okay, so it caught it right. Even though uh, I didn't select it there for him, it it caught it. So that's good for H and R Block. Uh, no. Have you had a claim that the child tax credit was denied in the last ten years? No. Okay, so now it's given the child tax credit. Great, even though I didn't select it on the other screen. This is weird. Sorry, you don't qualify for the other dependent credit. I mean, I wouldn't think I would, right? Because I have a qualifying child. That's a two thousand dollar credit. You know, this other dependent credit, it's a five hundred dollar credit. So, like, why do you even bring it up, HR Block? Right? Like, eh, anyway. I'm not saying HR Block is bad. I'm just saying it, it's it, it it looks accurate. It's doing things right. Okay. This is oh, this is another thing here. 
<sighs> okay. Um, recovery re recovery rebate credit, seventeen hundred dollars. Did did HR Block ask me if I received a stimulus payment in this scenario? I don't think it did. Right. This is this is basically assuming here that I did not receive a stimulus that Jimmy did not receive a stimulus payment. And so it's uh, assigning him a recovery rebate credit of $1,200 for him and $500 for his daughter, Molly. So if I didn't know what this was, I might just look at the, look at this and say, oh, okay, cool, I'm, get, I'm getting a $1,700 credit, even if I did get a stimulus check, right? So I'm gonna hit next and see if it gives me the opportunity to kind of correct this. Again, I'd probably just look at this if I didn't know what this was and say, cool, I got a $1,700 credit. They don't even address it. Did they, did they ask if I received a stimulus payment? I don't think they did. That's 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 not good, H and R Block. You need to fix that. TurboTax it asked me, it asks you, did you receive a stimulus check, stimulus payment? If so, how much did you receive, right? And then it says, okay, that looks good, right? If it's the full amount you should have gotten, right? If it's less than you should have gotten, right? Uh, or if you didn't get a stimulus payment, it'll calculate the recovery rebate credit for you, but it'll it'll directly ask you if you received a stimulus payment. H&R Block, you kind of have to know what this recovery rebate credit is and what it's getting at, or you're going to do your tax return wrong. Okay, so I'm going to go into this recovery rebate credit and tell H&R Block that, yeah, I got a stimulus payment. Because um, it assumed I didn't, right? Okay, here's the question. Did you get a stimulus payment in 2020? They should have asked this question uh, just as I was going through the tax return preparation process, tens of millions of Americans got a stimulus payment in 2020. This should be asked of everybody. I shouldn't have to click into uh, recovery rebate credit in order to to get to this information, okay? So did you get a stimulus payment? Uh, were you a resident of US territory in 2020? No, I'm a resident of a state, California. Did you get an economic stimulus payment in 2020? Yes, okay. Okay, stimulus payment received. So I'm going to say 1700 right, which is the full amount. Right, okay, so that got rid of the recovery rebate credit, right? Because I said I got 1200 for me, 500 for the daughter, right? But what if I said I only got 1200 right? Let's say the, the, IRA, the treasury didn't send 500 for the daughter. Okay, so it, then it correctly calculates the recovery rebate at 500 So again, HMR block is accurate here. It's doing things accurately. It's just not necessarily asking all the questions I would think it would, right? Like TurboTax kind of did. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. Okay, that looks good. Taxes, payments, and penalties. All right. Common taxes, penalties, and payments you might have. Again, these are, other than maybe estimated tax payments, these are things that I don't think the common... American, you know, Joe average taxpayer knows about. So it's, it's again, kind of weird, kind of like folks out there, do you know what the alternative minimum tax adjustments are, right? There's a bunch of them. Can you name them all? Probably not. I actually don't think most CPAs could name all the AMT adjustments. Like, so it's like, yeah, anyway, but I'm assuming on these apply. Did everyone in your household have health insurance? Yes. I'm going to say yes. What kind of insurance did you have? Let's just say a health insurance through an employer. Thanks, that's all we need to know, okay. Additional taxes, payments, and penalties. Okay, again, there's no pe there's no ACA penalty anymore because of the CARES Act. Well, not the CARES Act, because of the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. It's weird they put it here. Right. I mean, someone might be confused and think this is an additional tax payment or penalty when it's zero. Right. And it doesn't even apply to him because he has he had health coverage insurance the whole year. Right. So it, it, just another little thing where H&R Block isn't being entirely clear. Next. OK, so type of tax payment or penalty. So federal tax, this is what they're calculating the federal tax liability as. And they're saying the withholding was $7,206, which they got from the W-2. That's correct. Okay. I'll trap up your federal taxes. Okay. Do you want to create 2021 estimated tax? This is if you want to make estimated tax payments to 2021. I'm going to assume Jimmy doesn't. No. I want to apply all or part of my refund to 2021 estimated taxes. I'm assuming that uh, Jimmy does not. So uh, I'm saying no here. 
right? It's like, I, I, I don't know why you, I'd rather you just have the, I mean, there are, there are some reasons where it's like, okay, if you're going to have a Q1 uh, liability, right? Okay, you can apply the refund. But otherwise, it's like, I'd rather you have the money in your bank account now to pay down debt or invest, right? Rather than just applying it, keep it in the treasury to apply to your next year's taxes. Okay, this is if you have uh, identity theft issues. No. Registered domestic partnership. No. All right, now down to miscellaneous. Here's some miscellaneous things. Um, a designee, right? Check this box if you'd like to allow somebody to uh, discuss the return with the IRS. Instead of, uh, rather than having to jump through some hoops, they could just you know call them and talk about the return. Uh, $3 to the presidential election campaign fund. You can do that if you want. I'm going to assume Jimmy doesn't want to do that. Okay, so next step, this is just information. Check for additional documents. Okay, so I don't, I don't think TurboTax did this. But here's another thing where it looks like HR Block is trying to make you think for yourself. Um, but I'm, I'm saying that, that Jimmy doesn't have any of these things, so I'm saying next. Okay, no issues, keep going, all right. Okay, so that's that, the income, right? His wages plus interest, less $300 for, what was that? That was the above the line charitable contributions. AGI, here's the standard deductions, here's the taxable income uh, tax on that taxable income, taxes withheld based on the W-2, and credits, $2,000 child tax credit and $500 recovery rebate credit for a $1,052 refund. All right, so review that if it, if it looks right, hit next. Okay, now they are trying to upsell this storage, I think. So what are they saying? We'll store your return for six years with this plus versus free only through November 2021. Well, I mean, you're going to get a PDF of it, right? You can just store it yourself. So free 24-7 access to your return. Okay, I mean, after you file it, when are you really going to look at it, have to go into HR Block and change it, right? You could just have the PDF that you've saved. Um yeah automatic import of your tax data next year manually in for enter all tax information again that's lame they don't roll it forward for you for free <laughs> they want you to pay 23.99 for that i don't like that that's 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 distasteful to me i don't like this upsell i mean gosh maybe if you you know or some billionaire with a ton of k1 and all this like complicated stuff you don't want to have to re-input everything every year well, if, if that's you, you, you'd probably be using a, a CPA. Probably many CPAs are working on your return, right? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really see the value of this, right, for our fake taxpayer, Jimmy Dean. His tax return is so simple. Why, right? Why, why would you pay for this? Um, but you know what? With these free editions of tax software, they got to make money somehow. Right, they are doing a service. I'm not saying that, that you should be guilt tripped into buying this, right? But I'm saying this is just an upsell for them to make money off of you for letting you file for free. The long the long term game here, and I said this in my TurboTax review as well, is eventually, right, when you don't qualify for the free anymore, you have the house, you have the itemized deductions, right? You have all these credits and you start a business and you own rental property. That you know because you've worked because you've done your taxes with HR block online in the past. You'll just find it easier to do it with them again going forward, right? And then they have a lifetime customer, right? Um, so that's their whole strategy here, right? To make money with the free editions is to upsell and to make a lifetime customer out of you where you will start paying them maybe years down the road when you don't qualify for free anymore, okay? So just keep that in mind. They're trying to make a buck. Um, so I'm going to decline this. Um, you should probably too. <laughs> Okay, be sure to keep a copy of this year's return with your tax records. You'll need it to re-enter information on your 2021 return. Yes, keep your tax return, right? You'll need it. <laughs> You'll need it uh, when you do your next year's return. Uh, maybe, right? But you should still keep it. Okay. Um, right, make sure to print or save your return once you finish. Yes, exactly. Do that. Okay, one last <laughs> one last opportunity to, to pay them money to upgrade for that storage thing, but we're just going to hit next. We're not going to upgrade. Okay, California isn't ready yet. We expect the California return to be ready on, on January 4, 2021. 
Okay, so it'll email me when the California return is available, or you can select the box and not send the email. This is interesting because in TurboTax, you could walk through the California return already. I'm recording this uh, in early December, by the way. But TurboTax, it looks like they don't have California programmed yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, you, you cannot f file these returns uh, yet, right? You can't file them until January, right? But at least in TurboTax, both the federal and the California kind of sequences to do, to, to do the return in TurboTax, they were both done, right? I was able to get through federal and California in TurboTax. H&R Block, it says they're not done with it yet until January 4th. Obviously, if you're watching this uh, on or after January 4th, you don't really care. But um, so it looks like H&R Block might be a little bit behind the H ball in TurboTax here. Okay, what if I hit start? Is it going to get, yeah, it's going to get the same screen. Okay. All right, obviously, if you have another state, you'd put that, but final accuracy review of the non existent California return. Let's check it out. All right, your return is complete. Okay. Okay, so no fees, right? Choose how to get your refund. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop here, right? Because this is the screen where you tell HR Block how you want to receive your refund, direct deposit, paper check. This is obviously a completely fake return. So it doesn't apply, right? I'm not going to put in bank account information here. All right, so HR Block. Um, it got the job done. Don't get me wrong. It uh, and it made it somewhat seamless in order to get through the return and prepare the return. However, like I mentioned, as I was preparing the return, there were some aspects where I feel that HR Block expected you to know for yourself what certain things were. Prime example: that recovery rebate credit. Right, that's the credit if you didn't get all the stimulus you're entitled to, or you're entitled to stimulus in 2020, you didn't get a stimulus check, right, that whole thing. They, they kind of just calculated the credit as though you didn't get a stimulus check and put $1,700 on there. And then it was kind of up to me to hit the little pencil and say, hey, let's fix this to actually tell h and Block that I got a uh, you know stimulus check or Jimmy Dean got a, got a stimulus check. So in those respects, not, not quite as intuitive, not quite as user-friendly as TurboTax, honestly. And I could see how many people would have just gone past that screen, assumed they were eligible for the $1,700 credit because h and Block didn't ask them about it as they were going through the process. Possibly, maybe filed an incorrect return and got a notice in the mail from the IRS later saying, hey, uh, what's up, right? Uh, you screwed this up on your return, right? So um, overall, I, I, I do like TurboTax better. Um, I think it was it, it left less room for error, not to say that HR Block is a bad product. Um, it's accurate, but it just, uh, there were some things that I felt were missing on that front. However, one thing I do like about HR Block better than TurboTax is it wasn't quite as salesy and upsell -y. Yes, it did kind of give that upsell for that storage thing, uh, but I feel that TurboTax, it was at, at more places throughout the tax return preparation process. I think there were two times that TurboTax uh, tried to do an upsell to their like audit protection program, which you really don't need if your return is this simple, right? HR Block, I think they only had that one spot in the preparation process where they did an upsell. So uh, maybe that's one point for HR Block, right? Um, another thing about HR Block is that its free edition is more robust. It covers more situations than TurboTaxes, right? So maybe even despite some of the hiccups here with the HR Block as you, as you prepare your return, maybe some things aren't quite as clear as in TurboTax, it could very well be worth it. Right, if you have, uh, if if you would otherwise be eligible for a free TurboTax return, but you have student loan interest, right? But get paid for daycare uh, for your kid, right? But you have teacher expenses, but you qualify qualify for student loan interest deduction, right? Because those thing, all those things, you have to pay for a, a paid TurboTax edition. Uh, if you have those things, you want to report them on your tax return. h and Block, you can have those things and still file for free. So pros and cons, pros and cons, both h and Block and TurboTax are pretty good tax softwares. I'll probably do a full-on comparison uh, of them in the future, kind of just doing side-by-side. -side. Okay, now we're going to input into TurboTax, uh, now into h and Block. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are some leg ups that, uh, that TurboTax has against h and Block uh, just in the tax return preparation process, but h and uh, Block Online is still a fine product. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and just as a reminder, if you want to support the channel, 
you can uh, check out my affiliate links to the tax software in the description. I would really appreciate it if, you, uh, if you're going to buy tax software anywhere this year. Uh, buy it through my links. No extra cost to you. And in fact, sometimes these tax softwares, they give us affiliates discounts, right? So the price uh, through my affiliate link might even be lower than the price you would pay um, otherwise. So thanks again for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.